episode 22. Let's do this. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Welcome back. I am your host, Enoch Sears, and this is The Business of Architecture, the show for solo architects where each week I bring you an interview exploring how you can leverage your skills as an architect to make more money so you can forget about paying the bills and focus on creating great architecture. Welcome back, Agile Architects. This is Enoch from Business of Architecture. Today is our second segment with William J. Martin, architect. He practices in New Jersey. And I first met William, or Bill as I like to call him, on Twitter, I believe, um, with Frank Cunha because they both have these massive, massive Twitter followings. Bill is up to about 20,000 followers. And he really is excellent about engaging with people and talking and tweeting and retweeting. And I could tell that he has something figured out about social media that I wanted to learn more about. So welcome back to the show, Bill. It's good to be back. <laughs> well, it is great to have you. And like I said, I want to jump in a little bit to the more technical side that we talked about in our last episode about how you were an early adopter with, it sounds like with CAD, you were very early yes. in, in adopting that, and then also with Revit. And then with your website and social media, so first of all, before we get into that, tell me, this is the question a lot of architects want to know. Are you getting any project leads from your web presence or from your website? I do. Um, some of them I get directly. It's, it's hard to tell sometimes whether they're coming directly or indirectly, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. Uh, but I've gotten leads off of Twitter and off of Facebook, and then there's the indirect leads that come from people being aware that you're out there in social media. So just having a presence in social media can lead to people finding out about you and then being able to connect with you through websites and, of course, by picking up the phone and, and calling. Okay. So that's leads. Have any of those yes. leads turned into real projects? Yes. Okay. Absolutely, yes. And how, how many leads would you say you get a month from your Internet activities? I would say about half of my practice comes from internet-related activities, okay. such as Twitter, Facebook, and especially the web, my website. Okay. Because what I'm trying to get at here is, is it a worthwhile use of time to get involved with the website or get involved with social media? How would you answer that? Oh, it absolutely is. And it doesn't take as much time as people believe it does. Okay. I only spend, I spend a few minutes uh, in the morning and I may check in in the mid, middle of the day, and then I spend some time in the evening. I happen to enjoy doing it, uh, but it's not as time-consuming as uh, people would lead you to believe. And, of course, I know that's a fear for, for some in the profession that they're going to be spending too much time doing something that they don't see the value of. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, let's to, to get motivated and to get started off today, give me a, one of your favorite success quotes. Um, well, one of my favorites is um, uh, from Robert Frost, poet, and it's uh, two paths diverge in the wood, and uh, I took the path less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. That is a wonderful quote, and it just gives me goosebumps. It's so poetic, and it's so evocative. How, have, how has that quote and that idea influenced your life, Bill? It has helped me to realize that you don't wait. Do it now. It's not going to get any easier. Do it now, choose your path, and, and go. And this is what I have done with every aspect of my practice, my personal life, and it's worked out for me very well. So I'm I love it. I love it. That, that works, that works yeah. in very well with the theme of our show. I don't know if you're aware or not, our bump music that introduces the show actually says that we need to do it anyway, and that one of the biggest things we need to worry about is the fear of standing still and not doing things. You going to sing it for me? I would, I would, but you know what? I want to keep our audience entertained. <laughs> you don't want to drive people away, right? Yeah. That's right. That's it's not just the what point. the internet is about. You want to bring people in. You don't want to drive them away. Exactly, exactly. That's an important point. Yep. So, Bill, on that, on that idea of bringing people in, what would you say are maybe three suggestions you could give to other architects out there who are thinking about getting involved in social media or who are thinking about 
revamping their website. Give me well, give me three pointers. Let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, your your gateway. I believe the gateway into the internet is through a website. So you need to have a website, and by that I mean a real website. There are a lot of firms that have placeholder websites where it's one page, it's a couple of pictures, and their phone number. Maybe uh, about us, and I always detest that term when I see it on a website because it's not about us; it's about you, the client, and that's what you need to communicate. But you need a real website that has content, that has information. Um, that will help the client, uh, even if they don't use you. Um, and that's your gateway into the internet as a medium to produce results for you business-wise. Okay. And that's I did notice on your website, it doesn't say about us. It says about you, and I was intrigued by that. Yes. That is why I have that that way. And I've had comments from people about that, um, that they were intrigued the minute they saw that. So it's working. It's working. It's about... Serve. I mean, we're a service business. You know, it's about drawings, it's about creativity, it's about design, but it's about service. You want to make sure that the client understands that you're there to help them achieve their goals, whatever their goals may be. It's not about our goals as architects, it's about the client's goals. So and tell social, me little, so, social media is a good way to get that message out. Tell me a little bit about your website. How often do you update it? Give me an idea of you know what what are some action steps other architects should take if they want to take their their website to the next level because you've been down that path you're having leads roll in now based upon your web presence what does another architect need to do to get to that point? Well, they need to have an actual website that isn't a placeholder. They need to either sit with a web designer. Uh, um, I would recommend they sit with a web designer, although I never personally have, uh, and they become. You become their client, just like you're interviewing a client. Tell them what you want it to do, and then they'll develop it for you and put content on it, and the content should be related to what you do and how you want your image to be portrayed to the world. It's your, you know, it's your uh, image of what you do that's presented to the entire planet because uh, anybody anywhere in the world can tap into your website if they, uh, if they want that information. So you got to get a real website. Okay. So I noticed your website is pretty non-traditional, Bill, and the reason why I say that is because it seems to be pretty rich with information. Yes. When I go in there, there's quite a few links. There's a lot about different stuff you've done. There's a lot about how you handle the process of architecture. What is your sort of methodology or your approach to your website? I needed to be able to communicate clearly from the beginning that I would be there to help my clients achieve their goals. I became an architect to help people. I want them to know that I'm here to help them. And what are Even, one or two things that you do to convey that? Well, first of all, I try to make it easy to navigate. Now, I, I know some people are going to cringe when they hear this, but I designed the website myself. I wrote the HTML code. I learned how to write this code early on. I like doing it. But I know there's a lot of people who will look at my website, and, and because it's non-traditional, which makes it unique, in a, in a sense, a path less traveled by, um, because of that, it doesn't look like everybody else's website. Anyway, I try to make it easy to navigate. If you come to my portal, there's a splash window that gives you a, a couple of quotes and a picture, and then you enter from there. The second page is another splash. That'll take you to either residential design or commercial design directly, or if you want the content, you can click on the other links. This way, if you're surfing through a bunch of sites and you're just looking for that eye candy, you can flip through it and get to the eye candy quickly without being bogged down in a lot of reading. But if you are interested in the reading and the content, as well as the eye candy, you can go to the content and you can always get back to the eye candy later. So I try to make it easy for people to get in there and get what they're looking for. Okay. So tell me about, let's move over to Twitter now because you have a huge Twitter following. You're very active on there. Yes. What is Twitter and why does it have any practical application for a service professional? Twitter is a micro blog. You can, you know, what does that mean? What microblog? Explain well, that to. 
you're limited. It's it's like a traditional blog, and I don't know if the audience knows what a blog is. It's if they don't know what a website is, they're in trouble anyway. But uh, uh, after you get a website, you get a blog. But but blogging, I consider Twitter to be a form of blogging. It's um, you're limited to 140 characters which means you have to be creative in what you say in those short snippets. It also means you can be a little bit artistic and a little bit edgy uh, with what you say. And uh, it's a way to engage the profession, and it's a way to engage the public in a way that uh, uh, you can, again, enhance the, that perception that you are there to help. You are there to help them achieve their goals, whether it's another architect that I'm twittering with and reading my tweets, or whether it's a potential client or whether it's an architectural student. I tweet uh, with people around the world. I have uh, a lot of people interested in my uh, tweeting and my website uh, that are in Asia and India. So Twitter is a, is a great way to engage the world um, without being bogged down in paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of, of words, which we can, uh, you know, easily as architects fall into these diatribes of endless, you know, descriptive words about what we do, <laughs> like I just exactly. did. <laughs> do you have I, any like Twitter. I like Twitter. I have a special affinity for Twitter. I think uh, Twitter allows architects to be edgy without being unprofessional. Okay. And what that's important. What programs do you use to to um, work with Twitter? I, I don't use any robotic programs or scheduling programs. I just use the the regular Twitter portal. So uh, is that on the web? The web portal? You go to twitter.com. I have and use it right I have there. it I have it on the on the web through my computers. I also have it on my phone, and uh, I check it periodically. And I will respond to uh, someone else's tweet depending on whether I think that the uh, subject is relevant. Um, Sometimes I will tweet or retweet support for someone else's uh, concepts and ideas. And it's, um, it's an, a micro exchange of some very powerful ideas. Excellent. Take us into Facebook. How, how involved are you with Facebook? I like Facebook, but Facebook I have divided into two sections. Um, I have my personal Facebook where I have my you know personal friends that are on it and then I have a page that's set up for my professional uh, work WJM architect so I have a page for WJM architect and what I do is I will comment on both they're interlinked but my professional page you can't get to my personal page unless I allow that and this helps to keep some of my private activities separate for my professional activities uh, I also have my website linked to the Facebook page for WJM Architect because it's on that page that I comment on current projects, um, what's going on, if there's something happening in the news and I want to comment on it, I'll post the link there. Facebook is nice because it allows you to have more than 140 characters. You can actually um, have a short conversation with a small group of people as they comment back and forth, and then that links back to my website. So if people find the Facebook page, they can link to the website and find me that way. And of course, if they, if they want to be friends with me, I have to see who they are and find out why they want to be friends with me. Like everyone on the internet, you have to be a bit cautious uh, about your personal information. Sure. What, what, give me one tip for someone who's getting started in social media to have success with it. From your experience of working with it, especially with Twitter, Give me one or two pointers about how to have successful interactions on there. All right. Well, the first thing is there's plenty of advice out there on the Internet about how to do this. The AIA has uh, tips and suggestions on its website as to how and what to do and how to approach these things. My advice is just do it. Just jump, go out and do it. Sign up, get an account, play around with it. Even if you, 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 you send out a couple of tweets and you, you um, follow a few people and nothing happens for a while, you can always go back to it. But don't wait. D do it now because this is the future. The future is now for this profession. We need to engage in the education of the public as to what we do because so many people don't understand. These formats, these Internet formats are a perfect way to do that. Mm -hmm. It's important that we all do it. Yeah. Bill, I noticed that. You know, like I said, you have you have about twenty thousand followers on Twitter, 
There are other yes. architects I know of who have been on Twitter for a long time, and they may have one or 200 followers. What are you yes. doing differently to get those kind of followers that other people are not doing? That's a complex question, but let me break it down this way. If you project the image of yourself online that you are there to help, you will get followers. You will get people. People will be attracted. People are attracted to someone that they feel can help them. And that's important. And that's what I do. The next thing I would say is content is king in the blogging world. You have to have content. You have to be tweeting content and posting content on Facebook and have content on your website that is that has value that can help other people, even if they don't hire you. The idea is put your ideas out there. If other people are using your, your ideas, that's fine. It gets it spreads your message more. And eventually the trail leads back to you because you're the one that initiated that message. So content is king. You've got to have a, you know diverse content on your website. You've got to uh, have diverse content in your tweets and on your Facebook interactions as well. Okay. So you said your first point was let people know and project the image that you're there to help other people. Yes. How do you do that specifically? What I try to do is I post links and I give commentary on things that are happening in the profession that I may, that I believe may be useful to potential clients. You know, what's happening in the office market? in New York or what's happening in the office market in Chicago. Even though I don't practice in Chicago, I'm going to post that content and I'll make a comment about, you know, uh, the economics of designing in this market is now become this. And it will spur a conversation possibly from people in that market or possibly from someone in India who's interested in the United States. But it, it's, it, you post content that helps educate other people. And that's what I mean by help. And by educating them, they better understand what you as an architect do so that when they need an architect, they may not need an architect right away, but when they need one, they're going to understand why they need one. Do you have any closing words about social media before we move on to another topic? Get out there and do it. Yeah. All architects, when I talk to my colleagues, I've given... I've appeared before AIA section meetings. I've given talks about this. Join Twitter. I mean, if you're not sure, join Twitter. Twitter is really safe. It, you, 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 know, you don't have to be posting every day. You don't have to be tweeting every day. Try it out. Use it. It's your gateway to the, some of the other social media. But Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, you know, any number of others. Uh, focus on one to start and develop a, 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 um, you know, a sense of comfort for it and, and proceed that way. And that's, that would be what I would okay. say. Closing okay. on I, also w I also wanted to add a resource for those who are listening. Um, I, have a, I have a conversation that myself um, entree, or at Entree Architect and at Hawkins Arch um, had about social media and about some of the benefits that we've personally seen from it. And you can get that by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash social. What that is, it's about a 20 minute conversation of the benefit we've seen from social media and how you can use it and leverage it to give yourself more success. So I invite everyone out there to, to download that. It's businessofarchitecture.com forward slash social. So Bill, let's move on and talk a little bit about the this being a sole practitioner. Yes. Because I haven't looked at the numbers lately, but I believe in the AIA in the United States of America, the majority of AIA members are sole practitioners. But it seems like a lot of times their voice is maybe not as heard as they would like it to be. Now, whether that's just a perception or a reality, I'm not sure. I haven't. I don't have numbers to back that up. But I think there definitely is a perception that there's a lot of sole practitioners out there who are out there on the front lines fighting from day to day and maybe not getting as much support as they would like to have. So, you, mean support, you mean support from the AIA? Correct. Support from the AIA and just more focus on the needs and concerns of sole practitioners. So that's sort of, I wanted to ask you about what are some of the challenges of being a sole practitioner as opposed to having four or five people that work for you? Well, let me just say something before we get into that. The, the AIA does have resources for sole practitioners, a small business forum. There are, uh, there are resources for that. Remember, I, and I'm not up on the latest statistics, but it's only about 40%, I believe, of licensed architects are AIA members. 
So there's a vast amount out there that are not taking advantage of the support that the AIA does give. Um, so I would encourage everyone out there who is not an AIA member to become one and to get involved with your section and your uh, state AIA uh, um, sections to um, to be able to, uh, to work so that we can work collectively to enhance the profession as a whole. Now, back to your question. What was the question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. The question was, <laughs> let's... <laughs> What are some of the challenges, your, your biggest challenges as being successful as a sole practitioner yes. as opposed to having four or five people that work for you? Right. Well, I mentioned earlier that, you know, when you have four or five people working for you, there's a lot of business that needs to be taken care of, a lot of housekeeping stuff that has to happen. Uh, I don't enjoy that at all. Fortunately, um, my wife is very supportive. She's my office manager. She's my confidant. She handles all the paperwork, the bills, the insurance, and, um, and she takes that burden off of me so that I can focus on what I love to do, which is the design, dealing with the clients, uh, dealing with the contractors, um, you know, producing the services that are of value to my clients. And the challenge would be? The challenge is when you're a sole practitioner, if you don't have someone helping you with those items, you have to be prepared for dealing with them. They can be time consuming and that's a problem. Um, and and that's what I had found in my experience. Having okay. been relieved, having been relieved of that requirement, uh, it was a, a tremendous uh, to helping me to get back focused on what I do professionally. Now remember, I mean, my wife does this for me in my practice, um, and she's got a, a very good business sense about her. But uh, there are bookkeepers that you can hire to you know keep track of the books and you know pay the bills and things like that. So you know that's always an option as well. And I had that for a while also. Okay. Bill, what's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I ever got. I, the best advice I ever got was don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Don't let anyone tell you. And this goes for anything in this profession. You can do it. You set your set goals to achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve and go out and do it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it or don't let anybody tell you it's too risky to do it. Just you got to go and do it because if you don't do it, you're never going to do it. Awesome. Bill, what is one thing that's really exciting you about your business right now or the thing that's exciting you the most about your business? The most exciting thing about business right now is having survived this last latest economic downturn. Let me explain what I mean by that. When I first started my business in 1991, we were just coming into the recession in the early 90s. So I figured if, if I can survive now, I can survive anything. That was until what happened in 2008 happened. So I had come to realize that um, the way I have structured my sole proprietorship to be agile and flexible and being able to uh, modify what I do uh, to, uh, to deal with the changing economic environment, there's that word economics again, um, has allowed me to uh, thrive through this whole period of, of economic downturn. Now, I, I know the statistics are really bad, uh, but I have been very fortunate. And uh, I have had very, I've been affected very little by what has occurred uh, because of the way I practice what I do. So that is what excites me, surviving. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep but we don't have time to go into it. I think we already dug <laughs> okay. into it. Plenty. <laughs> no problem. So, Bill, I really appreciate it. It's been great talking to you today. Thank you for telling us about your practice, about what you're up to today, and thank you for sharing that excellent quote about taking the road left to travel. That really ties into what we're all about here at Business of Architecture. Excellent. I applaud you for doing this. Um, we need more architects out there doing what you're doing, and we need all of our uh, professionals out there, men and women, on social media and 
get their websites out to educate the public. The public needs to be educated as to how we can help them, and we can. Absolutely. Well, you you are being a voice out there, so just in terms of from the other architects in the world, thank you for representing us on Twitter because I know that you are one of the most visible architects out there on Twitter. And how do people connect with you? So leave us with that. Uh, well, you can, if you're trying to find me, just go to Google and type WJM Architect into the search box, and that will bring you to either my Twitter page, my Facebook page, or my website. And my website has my contact information on it, and I even have my cell phone on there. <laughs> so you can find me that way. Very well. And I'm, I'm happy to get emails from colleagues. I'm happy to get tweets from colleagues. And, uh, you know, I, I get questions, and I like to reach out and help my colleagues whenever I can. Awesome, Bill. Thanks for being on the Business of Architecture. Thank you. Well, that puts the lid on another show about the business of architecture. I really hope that you got something out of this show that can help you have more success and profit in the world of architecture. And if you want to join the discussion about this episode, you can find it on the podcast page on businessofarchitecture.com. And while you're there, feel free to share the show using the social media share links. If you sign up for the Business of Architecture Insider List, I'll send you other resources like the Architect Marketing Guide and information on how to use web tools to get more visibility for your firm and your work. expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the hosts, and I make no representation, guarantee, promise, agreement, affirmation, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, commitment, except to help architects conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, do it anyway. <laughs>